local coverage you can count on continues with Glenn Marini's Sports Report. Sports coverage you can count on. In 49 states, it's just basketball, but this, this is Indiana. Tonight, practically a holiday, it should be, as boys basketball sectionals tipping off here in the Hoosier State. And we start in 4A at Carroll High School, Northrop battling Northside. Northrop getting work done here. We're going to start with Tanoa Ridley taking it to the rack and getting the deuce for the men in orange. Northside, though, up 31 28 in the third. Northside's Ronald Collins with the drive and the deuce. Northside, who putting up a fight? They were still up two. Isaiah Moore with the assist from Rodney Woods. Now Northside up 47 to 41, but Northrop in the fourth quarter. They would rally. Nick Haynes, the senior, canning the triple as Northrop rallies to win in a good one. 52 48 over Northside. It feels good. Uh, we had a lot of momentum going into it at first. Uh, got off to a rough start, but uh, we pulled together as a team and got the win. Feels good. Oh, man, that was a hard fall win, man. You know, um, you know, one of the things is that it's just about surviving and keep moving, man. Northrop now plays Carroll Friday at 6 in the semifinals. That will be your Highlight Zone game of the week. Nightcap at Charger Fieldhouse. East Noble facing DeKalb. A couple of Northeast 8 foes going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. First quarter action, Luke McHugh draining the three. That's the first bucket of this game as the Knights jump out to an early lead. But DeKalb, they go inside to the big guy, Connor Penrod. Screening, rolling, scoring. He had 14 points to lead the Barons. And then it's Nolan Knack in the corner, 4-3. He drills it, but East Noble not to be denied. Senior Hayden Jones, what doesn't this kid do? Three of his game high, 16 points. East Noble wins 51-36. They get Snyder at 8 o'clock on Friday. For a sectional at North Arena, the host facing North, the uh, host Huntington North, I should say, facing a 10-win Columbia City squad. Third quarter, Dominic Carswell inside. He had 10. Cardwell had 10. The Vikings up by four. Columbia City answering. Mitchell Wilson, the Eagles' all-time leading scorer, tacked 23 points onto his tally. A pilfer and a pair there, but the Eagles down four heading into the fourth. Columbia City, though, not done. Mason Baker canning the triple, but you're going to see Devin Newcomb hanging and hitting as Huntington North hangs on to knock off Columbia City 46 to 44. We understand it's if we lose we're done and we obviously don't want to lose especially for us four seniors. I mean we're a young team but our team just gets along and we all play together. Uh, we got to stand up there and knock them in but just a great defensive battle. I thought both teams played extremely hard. It was nice to find a way to win. Huntington North now plays New Haven. That's Friday at six o'clock in the semifinals. Late game at Bob Strait Court. We're talking Wayne and Homestead. Some SAC foes. Generals have won four of their last five. Spartans three of their last four. Speaking of threes, that was Grant Simmons for three. Nine two Spartans early. And then it's Luke Goody who had himself a game kicking it to Grant Simmons again. It's another three. It was 12-4 heading into the second quarter. The Spartans on top. Byron Pickens trying to get his team going. Michael Redding to Cam Tolls for three. But you'll see Homestead's Alec Grinsfelder find Jake Archbold, the senior, gets the deuce as Homestead wins by 20. 70 to 50 Spartans get the Southside Archers Friday at 8. 3A hoops up at Garrett. SAC rivals Dwenger in Concordia. The Cadets beating the Saints by one point in the regular season. Fourth quarter, Isaiah Robinson has the Cadets up by 5, 39 34. A little later, uh, you're going to see Robinson miss, but Braden Pearson, whoo, he does not. The sweet slam. He had a team high 13 for the Cadets. Dwenger trying to chip away. Hunter Burns had a night. He led the Saints with 12 points. You'll see two of them right there, but Concordia seals this baby from the line. Cadets win by 10, 49-39. Concordia gets Angola Friday at 6 o'clock. 3A action down in Norwell. 10 win Belmont against 10 win Eastern out of Greenstown, Greentown. Nick Ellsworth scoring from the inside for Belmont. You're going to see Cade Felling, who went over 1,000 points not too long ago, do the same. On the other end, it's Matt Arcari nailing the three for Eastern, but simply too much from Belmont, simply too much from Felling. He would score inside for two as Belmont wins big, 64-41. The Braves now get 3A number six Norwell at six o'clock on Friday. 3A sectional at Northwood, Tippecanoe Valley battling Lakeland. Second quarter is where we pick it up, and we pick it up with the Lakers looking good. Braden Bontrager with the bucket, and we're tied at 22 late in the second quarter. Vikings 
with a nice one here. Brendan Stump to Braden Shepard. It's good. We're tied at 24 at the half, but in the third, it's Bontrager again as Lakeland wins this one 54-33. They'll take on Wawasee Friday night. On paper, maybe the best game of the night. 2A number 9 Prairie Heights versus 2A number 4 Westview. First quarter, Charlie Yoder. LaGrange County's all-time leading scorer, and that's how you get it when you got a friendly roll like that. 35 points, 20 rebounds for Yoder. He's pretty good. Westview led by eight at the half. Out of the half. Hey, Panthers have a big man too. Six foot eight senior Elijah Malone with the hoop and the harm. But time winding down in the third, it's Yoder unselfish to Blake Egley. And that's anything but ugly as Egley nails it to beat the third quarter buzzer as Westview beats Prairie Heights 70 to 54. I mean, we know every game in this sectional, you're going to have to bring it to survive. So I think we prepared really hard at, at practice this week, and we got to get back to work tomorrow because we got another battle on Friday. Everybody played their role. Like our, our defenders, they rebounded. Our, our shooters, they knocked those shots down when we had to knock them down in those corners. So I just think everybody really played their role and performed at a high level tonight. Doesn't get a whole lot easier. Westview now plays 15th-ranked Churubusco at 6 o'clock on Friday. Great matchup at the Jungle of Manchester. Three Rivers champ facing, uh, we're talking Wabash, facing ACAC champ. Of course, that would be Bluffton. Pick this one up in the third. Bluffton's Harrison Schreiber with the hoop and the harm. But Wabash just working it so solid all around the arc. Jasper Walter inside. A little floater action there. You're going to see Bluffton counter with Dominic McPherson. He would beat the third quarter buzzer with a three. But in the fourth, it's the Apaches pulling away. So solid, as I mentioned. You're going to see Trenton Daughtry with the layup here for the Apaches as Wabash wins it over Bluffton, 53-44. You know, as a senior, I mean, you don't want to take anything for granted. Uh, I came out, I did, not want to, I did not want this to be my last game ever. It feels great. We know we got to play one of these two teams. They're a very good team. It's a great feeling to win. Uh, you no, know, it's survive in advance, and we were lucky enough to survive tonight, and so... Uh, we don't care who we play. We're just glad we're playing Friday. All right, so who does Wabash get on Friday? The winner of this one, Manchester versus Canterbury. Manchester's Caleb Stout for three. Manchester with an early three-point lead. Squires up 5-2, to two, and then it's Weston Hamby. What a career he has had. He drills the three for Manchester, and Canterbury starting to get maybe a little worried, but they pull it together and do the Cavaliers. Christopher DeWeese. Little turnaround jumper in the post for two. Then it's Noah Drapala for three. He's going to shoot this one basically from your living room as Canterbury goes on to win this one 58 to 56. So it's the Cavs taking on Wabash Friday night. That should be a fun one. 1A sectionals down at the Raider Dome in Panito. Northfield facing North Miami. Northfield's Graydon Holmes making things look good for the Norse. He got the deuce on the inside. Then it's Clayton Tomlinson. Doing the same, that maybe goes down two points to Northfield. Greg Sonnefrank, though, coming the other way. He drills a three, but it would be Northfield's night. You're going to see Holmes do it again for the guys in blue and white as Northfield wins at 85 to 50. The Norse will take on Lakeland Christian Friday night in the semifinals. Final stop in Indiana, Smith Academy in Southern Wells. First quarter action. Austin Harris from up top for the guys at home in Southern Wells. Out to an early lead, and then you'll see them bury it again from behind the arc. This is Dylan Junk throwing in the triple. Smith Academy doing all they can to fight back. Ja'Kai Taylor spinning and scoring in traffic. But Craig Roush, he's a matchup problem in 1A. He beats the first quarter buzzer. Ooh, and Southern Wells wins big 63-28. The Raiders will take on Southwood Friday night. Over at Ohio, Antwerp putting its 23-0 record on the line. District play in Division Four. Archers facing Edgerton. First quarter, Edgerton's Logan Showalter off the cup, or off the glass and in the cup, I should say. Bulldogs looking good. Antwerp responding, though you knew they would. Luke Krause with the three. Then you're going to see Jacob Savina with a beautiful two. And Antwerp keeps its undefeated season alive. The Archers a winner, 49-48 in a thriller over Edgerton. 
District action at Elida Fieldhouse. Crestview won the Division IV state title last season. The Knights facing Columbus Grove tonight. First quarter, Brody Beck, Brecht, excuse me, hits the three. The Knights trailing by two early. Now it's Kalen Etzler. You're going to see this kid play at Ohio State. Tip at home his own rebound, but Crestview does fall, so no repeat state championship. 50-42 the final of this one. We got more hoops, including Purdue at Iowa, coming up after the break.